Hello there, and welcome to this collection of notebooks and tutorials on machine learning for audio signals in Python. This is a course offered by Professor Schuller at the Humanoid University of Technology. I am Renato, the instructor for these online materials, and on this tutorial we will talk about variational autoencoders. So the denoising autoencoder that we saw last time was robust against noise at its input. It was the audio signal. This time, the variational autoencoder is robust against noise in its encoded domain, which is also called the latent representation in the latent space. Here, you can find a very nice uh, tutorial about what is a variational autoencoder. There are very interesting explanations. And also here, at this link, you also find another very interesting a tutorial understanding variational autoencoders. Similar to the denoising autoencoder, we also add a fixed noise during the training process. But instead to introduce noise at the input, we add it to the encoded signal in the latent space. But the training could just find a solution where the latent representation just becomes very big, which would effectively drown out the noise because it would appear relatively smaller. To counteract this, we introduce a regularizer term, which is added to the reconstruction loss function, usually the mean squared error. This is an added term for the loss function, usually with a factor for weighting the importance of the regularizer. This regularizer term is minimized if the mean value meaning the output of our original autoencoder is minimized. This punishes large values in the encoder domain and keeps the small in the training. We could now just train this network in this way. But to help the training, there is a parallel network which outputs the variance of the added noise for each element of the encoded signal in the latent space. In this way, the training can start with very little noise to help the training find a useful and suitable representation. To avoid the system staying in the no noise state, there is an additional component in the regularizing term, which is minimized if the added noise has unit variance, meaning a variance of value 1 for each component of the encoded latent representation. This effectively punishes too little or too much noise too little more than too much. Hence, for this regularizer term, we need a measure for how different the current noise distribution is from the desired Gaussian noise distribution with zero mean and unit variance. Let the current mean from our usual autoencoder be mu and the current standard deviation to be sigma. In Bayesian terms, this is called the posterior distribution or the observed distribution. These are vectors of the size of the dimension of our latent space, meaning each element of the output vector x of the encoder has its own mean and standard deviation. Then our current noise probability distribution is given by this equation here, where we have our mu and we have our sigma. In our case, the division by the standard deviation vector above is an element-wise division, meaning we don't take into account cross-correlations. Our desired probability distribution with sigma equals to 1 and mu equals to 0 is given here. And this is also called the prior distribution, or the assumed distribution. A common information theoretic measure of how different two distributions P of x and Q or x is the kubeck leibler divergence, or the KL divergence, and it's given by this equation here. And you can read more about the uh, kubeck leibler divergence here, and it's a measure of how one probability distribution is different from a second reference probability distribution. Because we assume that the distributions of the different elements of our distributions are uncorrelated, 
uncorrelated, we can simply sum up or average the um, Kubeck library divergence of each element in the latent space. And our variational loss, VL, becomes this equation here, where V of J is the probability V and K of J is the probability K. According to the appendix B of the paper, autoencoding variational bays from Kingman and Welling, that you can find in this link here, the variational loss becomes this equation that we can implement in PyTorch and Python. And when we compare this to a simple mean squared error function to our ideal uh, of uh, mu equals to zero and sigma equals to one, and we have this plot here. In this case, we have the standard deviation ranging from zero to two, and we have the mu equals to zero, and we will have this plot here, where we can see the standard variational autoencoder loss and the mean squared distance from the ideal loss. Here we can see that both loss functions have the same minimum at um, sigma equals to 1 as expected, even here. But we see that the standard variational autoencoder loss has a steeper increase towards lower variance and less increase to higher variances. This means that low variance, the case of less noise, is more punished by the standard variation of encoder loss, hence the training will be less likely to find a low noise solution. Our model now will have two network outputs to train. The Y encoder mean which corresponds to our previous encoder and the Y encoder standard deviation, which just produces the currently allowable standard deviation for each mean output during the training process. Since now our loss function consists of two components, we combine them in the training loop using a Lagrange multiplier to combine them in an overall loss value. And you can read more about the Lagrange multiplier here. Basically, the Lagrange multiplier simply weights the two components to achieve a desired trade-off between them. In our case, it will look like this. So we will have our mean squared error loss plus the variational loss with a factor of 0 0.01 in our case, and this is our Lagrange multiplier. Here, we also see that we can choose between two mentioned variational losses. So we have the variational loss and also the variational loss 2, that is the mean squared distance from above and the standard variation autoencoder loss. In our experiments, the program will read in two speech files as a simple training set. It is read in such a way that each file is one batch and we use um, the signal to PyTorch function to convert our arrays into PyTorch tensors. Here, we can define the actual autoencoder. So we have here the analysis filter bank for the mean values, and then for the standard deviation values, and then the synthesis filter bank. So we have here self conv one mean, and we will use um, 32 output channels, the kernel size of 8 times 2048 and the stride of 8 times, 8 times 1024. For the standard deviation values, we use the same characteristics, so it's 32 channels, 8 times 2048 for the kernel size and 8 times 1024 for the stride. This will be this convolutional layer for the standard deviation values. Then we have the synthesis filter bank, and we are using the convolutional transpose 1D. Then we have our encoder mean. We are also using the tan h as activation functions. So remember that our values will be from minus 1 to 1. Then we have the encoder standard deviation. And in this case, we are having an absolute value 
together with the 10 age so now we will only have positive values this is for the analysis then we have the decoder and we have our forward method and here we see that we also have this part here where we are adding the y encoder mean plus the y encoder standard deviation and we're multiplying by this torch rand and like function and we are going to talk about this later observe that the autoencoder uses filter kernel sizes of 8 times 2048 and strides of 8 times 1024 but we only use 32 channels and this means that we have a very tight bottleneck here the factor 8 here is just for experimentation and you can replace it by one for example then we would have shorter filters shorter strides and the bottleneck becomes less tight but the results will be much more noisy and in addition to our previous encoder which here we call the conv1 mean there is also the uh, encoder for the standard deviation of the added noise in the encoded domain that we're calling conv1 std like i explained here before we have the conv1 mean and the conv1 here std is the torch rent and like here for and it returns a tensor with the same size STD. as input that is filled with random numbers from a normal distribution with zero mean and unit variance and this is what we are using here for this y variation so now we'll go through the full code Functions for the variations we encode the my matplotlib pyplot we're importing our pytorch and we can also use the scipy io wolf file to read in audio files and we are also going to use librosa if we um, we'll use mp3 files here is the function signal to pytorch that converts a signal vector for example like a mono audio signal into a 3d tensor here is the definition of our model the conv auto ink that we talked earlier and we have our encoder mean our encoder standard deviation our decoder our forward and here we have our loss functions so we are going to uh, experiment with two different loss functions so we have our variational loss that returns the variational loss from arguments mean and standard deviation and you can see it from the paper autoencoded autoencoding variational base that was the equation that we talked before but also we can have an alternative that is the mean square distance from the ideal uh, mu equals to zero and sigma equals to one that is given here so here we are preparing our training set so we're going to use the famous speech from the introduction of uh, iron maiden the number of the beast and also the speech from iron maiden ace is high so we're just preparing here will be uh, the batch zero is uh, one file batch one is the other file we do some normalization we convert to pytorch tensors we generate our model and we define the loss function the part that is the mean squared error and then we are here so we have this part ready here we are defining also our optimizer so we are using the adam optimizer with a learning rate of one e to the power of minus four and then we can start our experiments we've seen the theory we defined our model we looked at the um, variational losses so we have everything to start running a few experiments so the experiment number one we will run like a conventional variational autoencoder so here we will use our variational loss not the alternative one we have here the lagrange multiplier so our loss is the mean squared error plus 0 0.01 times the variational loss that we've defined earlier we have here our standard deviation values from the network and the mean values from the encoder network then we are multiplying the standard deviation by this function rand n like that we've seen before and we add to the y encoder mean this is the y variation 
and then we apply this we apply the model of the decoder to this y variation then we have our y predictions so we will train our model and after training we have here our weights and we have the plots of the encoder and the decoder filter coefficients we can see here so after training the program we have the weights of the autoencoder and the decoder we have the um, coefficients in the encoder domain and then uh, the added noise controlled by the encoder std network so here we will also see that um, we will run our experiment uh, first without the additional noise and then with added noise. So here we have our training set and we have our no noise case. And we have here the noise case where we add, uh, we're adding Gaussian noise with unit standard deviation to the encoded signal. And we make we infer and make some predictions and then we will also listen to the results so first is the training set output for the clean encoded signal for batch zero so remember we have two audio files one is the batch zero one another one is the batch one so this is the training set output for the clean encoded signal that him who hath understanding reckon the number. So we see there is a bit noise there, but the noise has some special characteristics. We will discuss more about this a bit later. And now is the training set output for noisy encoded signal for the same file. So we see it's very noisy, but the noise somehow resembles the original um, audio file. And this also is a characteristic that um, variational autoencoder, they also have the potential to be used in generative applications. So we want to generate certain sounds, for example. Here is for um, uh, the batch one, so it's another audio file. Then again, for the clean encoded signal. We shall fight with growing confidence and growing strength in the air. We shall defend. So we see that there is a bit of noise in the background and the noise also has this, this characteristics that it's similar to somehow uh, the speeches of the training set. And now this is the training set output for noisy encoded signal. So we see that there is a, a lot of noise, we add the noise, but we can still uh, hear the original output. And we see that because we used the, the uh, variational loss that penalizes, like we discussed before, it penalizes um, noise, for example, and here we see that we'll have the standard deviation closer to one. Here is the target and the noise predicted signal for batch zero. Here's in the coded domain for batch one. So those files were what we use for training, but we also have another uh, file for validation, another signal that it's, it's the same files, but I'm just do, uh, taking, it's a long speech and I'm taking parts of it so the first one was the ACES uh, high we used with uh, a certain offset but now we are using no offset you listen that it sounds a bit different so it will uh, play the validation signal uh, without um, without and with noise but we will see that the model is now less robust to noise as now is the validation. So the model never seen this signal before. And we will also make um, a test when we will infer pure noise on the input. And we will, there is no uh, audio file speech, it's just pure noise. And we will see and listen 
what happens in this case. So here is the case where the verification set, this is the input. So there is, this is not the output of the, of the model. There is no added noise. This is what we are uh, using as an input to the variational autoencoder. We shall go on to the end. We shall fight in France. We shall fight on the sea. So this is the classic introduction of uh, ACES High from Iron Maiden. And now we will see the output of the model for the clean encoded signal. We observe that there is a lot of noise, but the noise also has this interesting shape and interesting sounding characteristics. Now we add the noise, so the verification set output for the noise encoded signal. We almost cannot hear anymore the original. And this is the case when only noise as encoded signal is um, we are using as a, a input to the model. So there is we are feeding this model just with noise. And this is what it sounds like, the output of the model. Here we see the verification, so it's the original and the predicted signal. And you notice that uh, we have much less robust to noise and we see that uh, we don't achieve good results. Uh, just remember again that this is just for learning and studying purposes. We're just using two small audio files uh, for training, but we already can have a lot of intuition about variation autoencoder and also to take a look of some of its characteristics. In the experiment number two, we use our variation, our alternative variation loss function for the training. So uh, everything stays the same, but here we are commenting this loss that we used before, and now we are using the alternative variation loss, and everything stays the same. So we will train our model and then here is the encoder and decoder filter coefficients here again we will be able to listen to the results so we will observe also that the uh, standard deviation is less close to one because this loss punish the lower noise values less. So the autoencoder should be more sensitive to noise now, and even the clean version would be not so clean. So this is also, we are testing with the training set. So it's the same audio files that were used to train the model. And we'll listen. People who have a stand. So this is the clean encoded signal for batch zero, and we already notice more noise there. And now it's the noisy encoded signal. So there's a lot of noise going on there. The noise also has this interesting shape and characteristics that are, are somehow similar to the audio files that were used to train the model but we also see that the model is less robust to noise. So here is the um, output for the clean encoded signal for batch one. So it's a different audio file. We shall fight with growing confidence and growing strength in the air. We shall defend. So there's a bit of noise in the background and now the output for the noise encoded signal. We shall fight with growing confidence and growing strength in the air. Oh, it's interesting to note also that the model is kind of behaving better on this batch one than on the first uh, batch zero. Who have a stamp. And it's very interesting to note this this noise um, shape and characteristic and similarities with um, the audio used for training. So once again, we also 
will test on the verification set. So this is the input of the model without any um, noise. We shall go on to the end. We shall fight in France. We shall fight on the sea. This is the uh, output for the clean encoded signal. Very interesting uh, output. And this is the output for the noisy encoded signal. And this is the um, output when we only use noise as encoded signal. And here again is the original and predicted signal. So we see uh, that in um, many cases, when we add a lot of noise or we use pure noise and in input, yeah, all the model output produces a mix, a strange mix of the training set speech pieces. This is the last experiment. This is experiment number three. And this time we will only use fixed noise with unit standard variance in the training process. So this means that we will not need the variation loss anymore. So our Lagrange multiplier now will become zero. So all this will be zero and we will have just the mean squared error. And now our Y encoded standard deviation will be ones with the same shape of the mean. So every, everything stays the same. We are using the same training set with the same audio files. But here now, here instead of using the standard deviation values from the network, we are using the unit standard deviation. And also here, we are setting the Lagrange multiplier to zero. So our loss is just the mean squared error. So we will train the model and it will be exactly the same procedures like we did in the other experiments and then we have also the weights and the um, encoder and the encoder filter coefficients and we already notice this very uh, prominent uh, analysis filter zero for the um, std and here now we will test using the Audio files from the training set. Listen now, so this will be the output for the clean encoded signal. What it means. Let him who hath understanding reckon the number. What it means. Here is the output for the noisy encoded signal. here for the batch one so the other audio file we shall fight with growing confidence and growing strength in the air we shall defend and here is the training set for noisy encoded so we add the noise for the previous um, audio file the same as this one so it's batch one we shall fight with growing confidence and growing strength in the air we see there's a, a lot of noise in the background, but we can still understand the main, the original um, file. And we see also that the standard deviation now is a constant one. And here we have the target and the um, predicted signal for batch zero, for batch one. And we see that after training, we have the plot with the added noise. So that it's indeed a constant one, like we seen before. And uh, the playing back, the clean signal, uh, we can hear that this sounds some, um, somehow uh, less clean than the, the first experiment, perhaps. So it seems to be uh, more uh, robust against noise in the encoded domain, or at least for the files used for training the model, but now we will do again with a verification set. So 
this is a part of the audio that the model never seen so this is the input we shall go on to the end we shall fight in france we shall fight on the sea this is with um, the clean encoded signal <laughs> And here is with um, added noise, so the noisy encoded signal. And here when we use only noise as the input. And here we have uh, the original in blue and the predicted in orange. So again, we see that in both cases, it produces a mix of the training set uh, speech pieces. So with um, noisy encoded, and we use just noise as the input. And we have to keep in mind that in this last case, uh, it has the advantage that it does not need a neural network for the standard deviation prediction. So what we did is just we set it to a constant standard deviation to one. So that's it for this tutorial. This is a very, very basic and short introduction to variational autoencoders. It's more to give some insights and intuition and to start to understand the basics, the theory behind it. And I encourage you to explore more other tutorials that are available online and play around with uh, bigger data sets and experiment with uh, different network architectures, different hyperparameters, depending on the problem you're trying to solve. And I see you next time.